Remember where we are at the moment, we are looking at 10 features. We are focusing on 10 of them, 10 features that make up the image of God in man. By the grace of God, we are going to look at the second feature. We are going to look at the fact that man can write. That we are looking at the, the, the 10 features that makes up the image of God in man. And we said really at the end of the day, they are one. Okay, they are one really because they are interrelated, they are interconnected, but we are looking at them differently so that we can understand them. Our ability, humanity's ability to write is one of the image of God in man. Because we can write, therefore we can improve our education, we can accumulate knowledge, and we can build on past achievement. Our ability to write is very, very important. Remember what we said about this feature, okay? They link us to God, they separate us from animals, and they help us to be able to fulfill our God-given assignment to rule and to reign as God's deputy and to rule and to reign as God's representative. And this was the ability that God gave every humanity. And these are the abilities that have been perverted in the fall. So our ability to write, therefore, improve our education and also accumulate knowledge and then build on our achievement. This is one of the features of the image of God in man. See, again, the God that is revealed to us. Remember the way we always do this, look at God. The God that is revealed to us in the Bible is a God that writes. <laughs> Amen. That is the God that is revealed in the Bible, a God that writes. The Bible actually gave us two occasions when God himself wrote something. Remember, when God spoke, we talk about speaking, he spoke through the prophet and the prophet wrote. <laughs> Okay. The things that God spoke to the prophet, we said God spoke to individuals, God spoke to group, God spoke to nation, God spoke through prophets, God spoke through the Lord Jesus Christ. But, but, but those things that were spoken through those people were written down. Okay, They were written down. The things that God spoke in at the beginning, Moses wrote them down. The things that God spoke to the prophets, the prophets wrote them down. The things that God spoke to nations, they wrote them down. The things that God spoke through the Lord Jesus Christ and to the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They were written down for us on the pages of the scripture. Our ability to write and obviously our ability to read is one of the image of God in man. But again, like I said, the, the, the God that is revealed to us on the pages of the scripture is a God that writes. And we want to look at those two occasions that is recorded for us in the Bible when the Bible says God himself wrote with his finger. When we saw the finger of God wrote. Can you remember those two incidents? Try and think of it. Yes, the first one obviously was on Mount Sinai when God himself wrote the first tablet that God gave to, to Moses, which he broke, by the way. When God wrote the Ten Commandments by his own finger and gave it to Moses. And the second one was during the reign of Belshazzar. Well, you remember when he asked them to go and bring, you know, the vessels of the house of God when he was parting away with his concubine and with his, you know, his people. And then the finger came. So let's read. Let's read those two incidents because I think this is very, very important. So we read Exodus chapter 31 verse 18. Exodus chapter 31 verse 18 and God gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai the two tablets of the testimony tables of stone wait for it written with the finger of God God wrote and God gave him this tablet with with the commandment written upon it let's read that incident I was trying to talk about in Daniel chapter 5 Verse 5, in the same hour came forth word, the fingers of a man's hand wrote over and against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. And obviously we can go on and read the story in Daniel chapter 5. But those are those two incidents, obviously, that clearly tells us that God wrote with his finger. And it reminds me also of the Lord Jesus Christ when they brought that woman that was caught in adultery. And the Bible says that the Lord Jesus was writing on the floor. He was writing on the ground, okay? The God of the Bible is a God that writes. Written language offers us the possibility of storing information, 
so that invention and discovery are not lost and they can be de developed even further. If we don't write, then we don't develop. If we don't write things that discovery and invention will be lost. You know, what we have today as inventions are built upon the shoulder of past discovery. Okay, no, no invention just come out of the blues. Okay, the, the plane that are flying today is built upon the model and the researches that has gone ahead. Okay, when you look at breakthroughs in some area of research, it's because they've looked into past research, researches and see what works and what doesn't work, what can we develop what can we build upon so our ability to write is very very important number one it helps us to store information it helps us to build education and it helps us to improve on previous finding so we are able to plan we have the capability to plan and build the future and this is very very important and this is why we send people to school all right. When when we have tyrants, when we have government or or tyrant leadership that wants to keep people in the dark, what do they do? They try to keep them from writing and from reading. In the dark ages of the church, the church was prevented from reading the scripture. Okay, it was only the the priest that could read the scripture in in Latin, and the 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 people were not allowed to, they were not taught to, they were not given the opportunity to read the scripture. And that was what was responsible for the dark age. Now, obviously, we know reading by itself will not solve all the problem. But the truth is that when people start reading, they will start developing, they will start planning, they will start building upon their future, they will know the truth. If people don't read, they don't know the truth. And if you don't, people don't know the truth, they will stay in darkness. This is why one of the things that Christians Christianity did. Wherever Christianity went to, they brought the Bible. And obviously that means they will have to teach the, 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 the local how to read. In some cases, Christianity have to develop. In some cases, because a lot of these languages were not written down. And, such, and as such, they don't have a written thing. So sometimes when, when Christianity gets into a, a place, when they want to bring the word of God to a group of people, they may need linguistics that will actually try to sort out and write down the language of those people, give them their language in written form, and then teach them how to read those so that they can be able to read the scripture. And that is what Christianity brought. And that's why Christianity often go hand in hand with education, teaching people how to read teaching people how to write because a group of people that don't know how to read that don't know how to write they will stay in darkness they will not be developed they will be backward and that is why it is important that we have education now we know that the devil has perverted that we will come to that but education is very very important the ability for us to read you don't have to have degree we are not necessarily talking about you know university degree even though that is important but the ability to read, the ability to write is so, so important. Let's look at Abacoc because we read something that is important here in the book of Abacoc, chapter 2. We read verses 1 to 3. I will stand upon my watch. This is a prophet that is talking. And set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto him speaking unto me. And what I shall answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord answered me and said what? Write. The vision, make it plain upon the tables that it may run that readed it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Now you see how important this is this is. God was telling the 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 man of God, the prophet. God spoke, but God said, Write it down. Write it down. Write the vision and make it plain. And that's one of the things I realized when you write things down. One of the advantages of writing things down, you remember what we said, you can, you can store the information so that the information is not lost. And then the information can be built upon. Also, writing actually allows you to be able to sort out your thought. When you write things down, it makes you to be able to think clearly. You know, say, make it plain. Write it and make it plain that it may run that read it so that when you write it, people can read it and people can act upon it. 
you know, people can 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 respond to it. You know, that that fact can be communicated just like we talk about speaking and writing. And this is very, very important. All right. The fact that when we write, people can read, people can respond, people can build upon that. And that is what we see. I mean, look at the scripture, for example, at, at the beginning the story of of the bible they, they were oral tradition that were passed across from one generation to another generation but became important for it to be written down why do we read why, why do we write to communicate to preserve and also for mission to reproduce so that people can write and people can can reproduce it we write so that people can also use that as a form i'm talking about the bible now as a form of mission as a form of of you know, evangelism. And that is why we write. In fact, both the Jews and the Christians were called the people of the book. That is what they were called. Other religions, particularly the Muslims, when Muslims started coming, they called the Jews and they called the Christians the people of the book because that is who we are. We are people of the book. Now, if you are people of the book, that means those books must have been written. And then that means those books need to be read. And this is very, very important. That which was spoken, has been stored and recorded for us in a book and that book must be read okay the ability for us to write and the ability for us to read and the scripture says these are written so that where we read in Habakkuk so that we may read and run what does it mean to run to act to respond to to fulfill that which was written and this is really very important let's read john chapter 10, 20 that tells us the reason why the scripture was written john chapter 20 and we want to read verse 30 and 31 john chapter 20 verse 30 and 31 and many other signs truly did jesus in the presence of his disciple which are not written in this book but these are written that you might believe that jesus is the christ the son of god and that believing you might have life through his name these were written why was the bible written the bible has to be written yeah it happens there was an event that happened there was a jesus that was a true there was an historic jesus jesus is not the figment of imagination of anybody jesus lived he was born he lived he died he resurrected and he went to heaven his tomb is empty today jesus is lord <laughs> and that event was written down and it tells us the reason why it was written they are written he says some are not written there are some things about jesus we don't know because they were not written we didn't need to know them there those things that were written were written for a purpose he said but these are written that you might believe that jesus is christ but how are we going to come to believe is only if we read or hear that which is written so that you might believe how will they believe if they've not heard how will they hear if there's no preacher how would they preach if they have not been sent? We have a book, a divine book that has come down to us and we've talked about this. And that book has to be opened. That book has to be read. That book has to be preached. That book has to be around that book has to be declared <laughs> amen to jesus and we have to receive it i remember what we said we also then have to respond by speaking by leaving it he said but these are written that you might believe that jesus is the christ and believing that you might have life through his name hallelujah but obviously there is a perversion of this okay there's a perversion of this where unfortunately one of the way the devil have taken over the authority God gave to humanity is to corrupt every single one of this feature, every single one of these characteristics of the image of God in man, particularly this area of writing. You know, pornography, we talk about pornography, the Greek word for pornography you can break it, it comes from two words, poni, which means illicit, which means prostitute, and graphene, which means to write. And graphene to write include both written and picture material. So pornography is actually the way that the devil has perverted this image of God in man. We are that which is written. The written, printed pictures has been prostituted, has become illicit. And that is the way, because the devil knows the power in written materials he has prostituted it and now we are not only talking about indecent pictures we are talking about prostitution of the whole process of writing even in our days okay people have taught 
turn this ability to write, they have turned it into propaganda. I mean, you can look down through the history of humanity, the wickedness that people have done to each other, people like Hitler. Even in our days today, evil propaganda has been propagated by using written materials. Written materials sometimes being turning it into things that we read in our news media, mainstream media, in our newspaper. Okay, a whole lot of these are being used as a propaganda, as it were, against God. As this were, as a source and a tool of wickedness to actually brainwash people. Some people have been brainwashed to hate other people of other religion, to hate other people of other races, just because they have a wicked ruler or a wicked leader, politician with wicked agenda. We saw that in the how... Hitler used propaganda, written material. You know, he has this book that he wrote. That book became a bestseller, particularly when he became the leader of Germany. And a whole nation was brainwashed to hate a group of people, to see other human beings as being less than human, as being less than even animal, that turned a whole nation into a killing machine. Now, obviously, there are a group of people that didn't go along with him. There were exceptions, but that shows you the power of propaganda, speaking and writing, and you will see how this all grew together. And by, by at the very height of this genocide, of this holocaust, the book written by, by, by Hitler was becoming a bestseller. People were being brainwashed. We have religion today that brainwashed children from the, from the young to hate other people, to essentially propagate lies about them using written material. So people are raised hating people right from the day they were born. And that is the power of written material. But you and I as Christians, we must learn to recover this, 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 this character. We need to write. As Christians, we must write. We must write for the truth. We must write for light. We must write for holiness. We must write. This is why our people must learn Thank God for, for Christians that are in, in academic places, that are in academic places where they can counteract all these lies. You know, if, if, if you don't have our people in these places, these people will just pull the wool over us. The bad amen of this world that are basically twisting the truth. And the other people that call themselves the new 80s that essentially twist the truth. And we have people like, like Darwin and people that want to push upon us Big Bang and want to push upon us evolution and want to use science to do that. But for our people that are scholars that knows the truth and writing materials to counteract this evil and these lies so that we can know the truth. This is one of the ways the devil is using to, to cause darkness and evil and wickedness in the land. But before I round up, let's talk about animals. Compared to animals, there's no civilization among animals. Why? Because they don't speak, they don't write, they don't read. Look at animals today. They are not any better civilization-wise from animals of yesteryears or 10 years ago, 100 years ago, but we have developed. Why? Because we can read, because we can write, because we can speak. Today, there is no discernible improvement in the habitat and the achievement of animals. Animals of this generation fear little better, if any, than their ancestors of previous generation. Why? Because they don't share this image that God has given us. But humanity is going back into the dark ages because we are allowing the devil to unnest the power of these images of God in man. But thank God that we as Christians can recover this image and use it as a force of good, counteract the evil, push out the truth out there, push the light out there. Hallelujah. But a time is coming when there will be so much darkness, when there will be so much evil, when the voice, the voice of truth will want to be shut out. But God will not leave himself without a remnant. And finally, God is going to come and take care of all this mess and get rid of all this evil and wickedness. And the Lord Jesus Christ himself will going to come and reign for a thousand years, what we call the millennial reign of Christ. But you can be part of that. But you have to have accepted him as your Lord and Savior. So you can do that today. Are you, are, you, are you a Christian? And when I say Christian, I'm not talking about going to church. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Have, have you read the book? Have you believed the book? Have you believed in him? Remember, these are written that you may know that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Christ. And believing in him, you may have life through him. You can come to him today and just admit that you need him, that you are a rebel. You need his help. It will come. If you ask him, it will come. It will change you from the inside. You become a new person. You will become your father. You will become your friend. You will walk this life with you. And when this is all over, you will spend eternity with him in the new heaven and new earth. Do it right now. Tomorrow may be too late.